Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and still I rise. And today I would like to thank the Speaker of the House, Speaker McCarthy, and the leadership on the Republican side, as well as Minority Leader Jeffries and the leadership on the Democratic side for affording me this opportunity to be heard. And still I rise, Mr. Speaker, and I rise today because there are moments in time that impact the rest of time. January 27th of 1945 was such a time. January 27th, 1945. It is said that there are days that will live in infamy. This has to be at the top of the list of such days. Because today, we will commemorate International Holocaust Remembrance Day because of an event that took place on January 27, 1945. Please allow me to share with you, Mr. Speaker, some information that I have from the U.S. Holocaust Memorial. On January 27, 1945, the Soviet Army entered Auschwitz and liberated more than 7,000 remaining prisoners who were mostly ill and dying. It is estimated, Mr. Speaker, that at minimum 1.3 million people were deported to Auschwitz between 1940 and 1945. And of these, at least 1.1 million people were murdered. One person who survived, whose name I shall not reveal, but is available to me for those who might want to make a further inquiry, indicated, quote, so I was hiding out in the heap of dead bodies because in the last week when the crematoria didn't function at all, the bodies were just building up higher and higher. Another person indicated, and they said, from now on, you do not answer your name. Your name is your number. And the delusion, the disappointment, the discouragement that I felt, I felt like I was not a human person anymore. This is what happened to people at Auschwitz, human beings reduced to numbers, sentenced to death, innocent people. Another article from the Holocaust Memorial. This one indicates, and this is the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust in the UK, indicates that 27 January 1945, liberation of Auschwitz and Birkenau, on 27 January 1945, Soviet soldiers liberated Auschwitz, Birkenau, the largest Nazi concentration and extermination camp. Many people focus on the concentration aspect of what happened there, and we should. But the horrific occurrence included extermination. This means, in everyday language, the murder of innocent people. This article goes on to indicate when Soviet soldiers arrived, they found several thousand emaciated survivors and the smoldering remains of gas chambers and crematoria after the Nazi had attempted to destroy evidence of their crimes. An article from History.com indicates this day in history, January 27, 1945, 
Auschwitz is liberated. On January 27, 1945, Soviet troops entered Auschwitz, Poland freeing the survivors of the network of concentration camps and finally, re finally revealing to the world the depth of the horrors perpetrated there. Auschwitz was really a group of camps designated one, two, and three. There were also 40 smaller satellite camps. This was a commercial operation, as it were, wherein there was a systemic means by which persons were being put to death. These are my words. Continuing with the words from the article, it was at Auschwitz, too, that Birkenau established in October 1941 that the SS created a complex, monstrously orchestrated killing ground. 300 prison barracks, four bathhouses in which prisoners were gassed, corpse cellars, and cremating ovens. It seems that, stepping aside for a moment, it seems that it is difficult for some people to believe what actually occurred. It is so horrific that some human minds refuse to accept what occurred. Now, there may be others who, for reasons associated with malice of forethought, who have just decided they won't agree. But there are many people who just cannot, with their human mind, conceive of such a thing happening. I want to commit, comment on uh, something that I saw this morning on television and compliment Joe of Morning Joe. Uh, he went to Auschwitz, and he was reporting from Auschwitz. And I want to compliment him because too often we don't allow the actual place where these things occurred, the venue, to be properly exposed to the public. I thank him for going there because he has inspired me to believe that this is a place that I have to add to my bucket list. I, I want to go and see for myself the, the facility that facilitated with the hands of evil persons the murder of millions of people. I want to, I want to see what actually happened in those facilities, actually see the facilities where these horrors occurred. 300 prison barracks, four bathhouses in which prisoners were gassed. Thousands of prisoners were also used for medical experiments. I have been to Yad Vashem in Israel. It breaks your heart. For people, many of us, it is, it is impossible to go there and not have tears well in your eyes. It is impossible to, to see the depictions of persons who were used as human guinea pigs, experimented on. It's impossible to see the horrors depicted and not leave feeling the sorrow and the hurt and the pain associated with knowing that human beings were tortured and experimented upon. Thousands of prisoners, continuing, were used for medical experiments overseen and performed by the camp doctor, Joseph Mengel, also known as the Angel of Death. In anticipation of the Soviet arrival, SS officers began a murder spree, a murder spree in the camps 
shooting sick prisoners in their efforts to destroy the evidence. No more ovens if they couldn't get to them. Just take your weapon and kill. Kill sick people. Just kill to destroy the living evidence of the horrors and evils that were being perpetrated. Shooting sick prisoners and blowing up crema crematoria in a desperate attempt to destroy the evidence of their crimes. When the Red Army finally broke through, Soviet soldiers encountered 648 corpses and more than 7,000 starving camp survivors. There were also six storehouses filled with hundreds of thousands of women's dresses, men's suits, and shoes that Germans did not have time to burn. They valued the clothing. They valued the paraphernalia more than they valued the lives of the people. They saved the material things and destroyed the human beings. What kind of people were they? Evil is not a sufficient label for persons who would do such dastardly things. Mr. Speaker, in the United States, days of remembrance for victims of the Holocaust were formalized when President Carter signed the establishing resolution. The days of remembrance will occur in April. President Carter signed the resolution. The resolution reads, well, the resolution uh, was signed for April the 28th and April the 29th. It passed the House on April 17th of 1978, passed the Senate on April 25th of 1978. And the President, President Carter, signed the resolution on September the 18th of 1978. The Holocaust Remembrance Day resolution, designating April the 28th and 29th of 1979 as Days of Remembrance of victims of the Holocaust. Here are words from the resolution. Whereas six million Jews and millions of other people were murdered in concentration camps as part of a program of extermination carried out by the Nazi party during World War II. Whereas People of the United States should recognize, this is what the resolution says, I would add, people of the world should recognize that all acts of bigotry are rooted in the cruelty of spirit and callousness that led the Nazi to commit atrocities against millions of people and should be and should dedicate themselves to the principle of human equality. Speaking aside for a moment, the world should recognize, not just the United States, but the world, that those who tolerate bigotry perpetuate bigotry. The acceptance of bigotry, the toleration of bigotry, is the perpetuation of bigotry. And we should all devote ourselves to the principle of human equality. This is from our resolution, the dedication and devotion of ourselves to human equality. I'm proud of the House of Representatives for passing this resolution. It continues, whereas the people of the United States should recognize that tyranny creates the political atmosphere in which bigotry flourishes and should be vigilant to detect 
and ready to resist the tyrannical exercise of power. Let me step aside for a moment and remind us that not only should we resist the tyrannical exercise of power, we should also resist the voices that verbalize power. We should resist those who would march through the streets of an American city carrying torches, shouting, Jews will not replace us. Our failure to resist and to announce, state without question, without hesitation or reservation, that such persons are persons who are perpetuating bigotry and hatred, the kind of bigotry and hatred that can lead to the death of people, our failure to do so is a means by which our inaction causes the perpetuation of bigotry and violence. Inaction is unacceptable. Every person has a duty, a responsibility, and an obligation to speak up and speak out against such demonstrations by people in this country. The unfortunate circumstance is that in this country, there is at least one person who would proclaim that among those who were screaming, Jews will not replace us, there is at least one person who found some very nice people to be among the ranks of those who would say such a thing. Whereas on April 28th and 29th of 1945, the armed forces of the United States liberated surviving victims of Nazi internment in the concentration camp in Dachau, Germany, and revealed to the world evidence of a tragic human holocaust that must never be forgotten. To never forget is to do more than recite what happened. To never forget requires that we also denounce those who would do dastardly deeds today. It's, it's, it's good for us to say that those who perpetrated deeds in the past should not be forgotten. But we must also denounce those who would perpetrate such dastardly deeds today. And these deeds include statements that some people see as harmless. What they see as just name calling when you call a person a name who happens to be of a certain ancestry, Coco Chow. That's just name calling to some people. But when it comes from a person who has held the highest office in the land, it's more than name calling. It gives some people a belief that people of a certain ethnicity, of a certain ancestry, that they are not as worthy of human life as others. We have a responsibility to call out these things. We cannot allow this kind of name calling, which can eventually conclude in the loss of life, to go unchecked. We have to check it. I'm here today to check it. Ours is a great country. I love my country. I salute the flag. I say the Pledge of Allegiance. I sing the national anthem. I stand. I place my hand over my heart. I love my country. But that doesn't mean that I won't criticize those who would do things that would cause harm to others within the country. 
It also doesn't mean that I won't defend those who choose not to salute the flag, who choose not to see, say the Pledge of Allegiance or sing the national anthem. That is a right that they have in this country. But we also have to recognize that all of us, we have to denounce people who say things, who use words that, according to uh, Emily uh, Dickerson, uh, when she indicated to us, a word is dead when it is said. Some say, I say it just begins to live that day. Those who give life to these words that can cause some people to harm other people. Whereas the Nazi concentration camp in Dachau, Germany, is not only a shocking symbol of Nazi brutality and destruction, but also a symbol of danger inherent in tyranny. The pernicious quality of bigotry and the human capacity to be cruel. Therefore, now, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America, the states of America in Congress assembled that April 28th and 29th of 1979 are designated as days of remembrance of victims of the Holocaust. And the president is authorized and requested to issue a proclamation calling upon the people of the United States to observe such days with appropriate ceremonies and activities approved September 18, 1978. Today, we commemorate the liberation of Auschwitz. Later on, we will commemorate these days of remembrance. But friends, I have lived long enough now to know that if we fail to remember the Holocaust, a great human tragedy, a crime against humanity unlike any other, there is no other crime against humanity that can be compared to the Holocaust. Just as there is no other crime against humanity that can be compared to slavery, but if we fail to remember the crimes against humanity committed in, in Auschwitz, I believe, unfortunately, that humankind is capable of repeating the horrors of the Holocaust. It is our eternal vigilance that will prevent this from ever occurring again. And our failure to be vigilant will create days that the human mind cannot conceive of occurring again. So I am here today as a member of Congress to make sure that my record reflects that I will not forget that I will stand with my Jewish brothers and sisters against all who would claim that the Holocaust never occurred, against all who would acclaim, proclaim that Jewish people have done things that would merit this kind of horrific behavior. I stand with them. Uh, they, they are my brothers and sisters. Their, their lives are important to me, and the lives that were lost are important to me. I want my record to reflect that when I had the opportunity as a member of Congress to stand before the world and take a stand, Mr. Speaker, I want my record to reflect that I took a stand against the evils that took place 
at Auschwitz and the evils of the Holocaust. I yield back the balance of my time.